Mr. Chairman, my Lord Mayor, Your Excellencies, uh, Sheriffs, distinguished guests, uh, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to wish you a very warm welcome uh, to this, the seventh annual City Week. The desire to continue trading with the UK has not diminished. Just this month, in fact, uh, the Chinese ambassador to the UK, Yu Zhoming, spoke at the Mansion House. His message was clear when he said, the financial centre in New York is a street. The financial centre in Frankfurt is a district. But here in London, you have a city. What brings me to this conference is I think we're at a very important historical moment, uh, facing a lot of uncertainties and a lot of clarification. And uh, my purpose of attending the conference is really trying to provide a big picture and trying to provide a global view, highlight opportunities as well as challenges. The aspects of City Week I find most interesting are the fact that you get people from all types of different sectors listening in but with a strong focus on financial services um, and that connectivity between what's happening in the bigger world and what's happening in the City of London um, I think is great so we actually have very much an outlook on the broader world and global issues and not just focus on the stuff that we're, we're doing in our day-to-day -day lives. We did have a good start to the day. Um, we have covered a lot of different areas um, of the city. Uh, the panellists, I think, all had something quite innovative in what they were saying. And again, you're not just listening to the same old things that you might be reading about in the newspapers every day, but actually live thinking um, as, our, as, our, as our thoughts unfold. What I liked about the City Week program was that there was a lot of discussion about sort of macroeconomic trends, so conversations about Brexit, but also conversations about other influences like fintech, technology, um, regulatory policy, and other things, which it just covers the full spectrum and is hugely relevant then for anybody who's working in financial services. Minimum standards serve to level the international playing field and to promote global stability. If minimum standards are not agreed, and implemented, there's a risk that jurisdictions will engage in a race to the bottom in terms of re regulatory standards, or there'll be less reliance on global rules leading to fragmentation. Both outcomes create inefficiencies, complexity, and risks, and are therefore undesirable from both the banks and the regulators' perspective. Um, I do think, though, that with uh the geopolitical events that we've heard en uh, enough about, I guess, already today, uh, I think are bringing new momentum, though, to this argument. And I suspect we'll, we'll see some further discussions on this because I don't see how the world moves forward without um, at least bilateral agreements. Uh, it, just, it just won't work. Well, I was speaking on the session that was about equivalence, and so obviously that's an important ingredient in the uh, relationship that the UK is going to have with the EU in the future. But it, it was more than just equivalence in that context. It was also, well, can it be part of an international uh, agreement on how we recognize one another's rules and how are the uh, international organizations doing? So quite a rich, uh, wide ranging discussion. We're not detecting any great flood. We are seeing people make contingency arrangements so they can continue to operate. And yes, that means making arrangements if they need to, to move a few thousand jobs. But at the moment, we're not detecting a big uh, flood of people away from London. Every um, member firm here is in one way or another involved in their own contingency planning. And what all of us are looking at in our contingency planning is what we do, how we do it, where we do it, who we do it with, and uh, who within our own firms is doing it. So uh, it would damage London and it would damage Europe if, if Europe didn't have the same access to London. Uh, and there is a, um, you know, there is a dire scenario you can paint, uh, the so-called uh, sort of Jenga Tower, where bits move and then the whole infrastructure and ecosystem starts to move. Um, but uh, as, uh, as Kenneth was saying, there's no single centre in Europe that is likely to emerge as being able to take the place of London. 
if more functions by the, the, the banks that support our business move to Europe, we would have to face off those, yeah. uh, those jobs uh, in Europe. But it would be a handful of jobs rather than, uh, rather than any more than that. The EU always has, and I suggest will, continue to find a way around legal issues. And I say this both, both positively and negatively. Existing EU law and trade agreements should not also be seen as the only way of constructing a template for the future EU 27 and UK relationship going forwards. The whole thing is all about just giving people the opportunity of talking and engaging with each other. So often in this world, we communicate without listening. We, we project, we don't receive. So I think the great thing about this is you can't avoid being around here and having to listen to people and to respond to what they say. It's that immediacy, it's that dialogue, it's that conversation which really matters here. City Week brings the whole of the city's interests together here at one time. And of course, the city isn't just about London. It is the most vibrant financial centre in the world. And so looking at what the city is doing, how it's doing it, has enormous importance globally as well as domestically here in the United Kingdom. I think the most useful thing for me coming here to City Week has been the opportunity to talk with a breadth, a wide breadth of people from all sorts of firms that I wouldn't normally have the chance to meet and talk with uh, across the whole of the City of London lawyers, smaller banks, asset managers, as well as the big firms, big banks and asset managers and corporations that I do deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The City UK did a survey of city businesses last year and some of the results of that I thought were quite stark. 70% of the businesses they surveyed hadn't got cyber in their top 10 risks. India is a big manufacturer, but much more. And while the government is trying to sort of encourage manufacturing in a big way, uh, because we are largely a services economy, um, I think the opportunities for a deal with the UK are very bright, particularly since there's political will on both sides. And businesses know each other very well. Oscar Widda once said, a pessimist is somebody who complains about the noise when opportunity knocks. The China opportunities are knocking. China and Britain has a huge untapped potential and a broad prospect for financial cooperation. Well, uh, this is really one of the most important events in the city calendar. It's a great uh, intellectual forum, a gathering of people from around the world, around the city, across the United Kingdom, to talk about what is, in fact, Britain's most successful industry, the financial services industry. I thought there were a number of of very interesting panel discussions. Um, I'm pleased to see a number of representatives of you know, key trading partners to the UK come speak, talk about their, indeed their hopes and expectations regards what they will be able to carve with the UK in the future. Yes, what I, what I gained from City Week was a lot of knowledge uh, about, uh, authoritative knowledge about a lot of issues that I think are pretty serious for the UK at the moment.